Good morning, this is Mandy with the Soulfully Sustainable Radio Show. We are into October 2018 here, and uh, I just had this impulse to share whatever this was that was moving for me, and it's somehow related to this episode, another episode, I'm not really sure, but I'm going to trust the impulse to share with you all in this moment, because the urge is really strong, you know, I... uh, one of the things I've noticed in my body over the last few years is this ability or like I've increased my ability to recognize when things are not quite aligning. Um, when there's something going on under the surface of my reality that I can't quite put my fingers on and I don't quite have language for, but I recognize the familiar feeling of some sort of software, if you will, going and going in the background of my experience. And um, learning to really trust that, learning to make space for it to come to the forefront so that I can know what it is, so that it can present or trigger me or whatever it needs to do. Um, so that I can move on, as opposed to all of the skills that I would have engaged before, patterns of behavior, to keep that at bay, to keep it out of my awareness, to not allow it to come come to the surface. Um, Oftentimes, those things that are lying in the undercurrent are the things that I continue to ignore and deny and, and work really hard in sort of an unconscious way to not bring to the surface because quite frankly I think what happens is those things that are riding in the undercurrent are the things that are profound and can flip our lives upside down flip the the way we see our world upside down and change things forever and one of the things I know about my own evolution is that my process um, to discover more of who I am and allow that to flow freely has meant that how my life has looked in the past doesn't necessarily look that way now that the familiar comfortable routines and patterns and experiences and places that I've come to know um, as I allow these things to to show their heads and integrate into my body and into my experience I then know something different and I can't come back from that so my life ends up changing rapidly and sometimes completely so the the environment that I live in and the way in which I live ends up changing completely and fully and doesn't look like what it did before. And that's scary. And I know instinctually that that's scary. I know that um, that my the patterns that my brain has to keep my life at status quo, all the, the ways that my body's been trained for 30 plus years to keep things the same, um, really kicks in. It's this fight or flight, but it's instead of fight or flighting, it's keeping things static, keeping things the same. And at all costs, I will ignore signs. I will deny certain things that are going on and experiences that are informing a change. And I can allow that intensity to build and really work hard at, at not addressing it. So it takes a great deal of trust and a great deal of courage for me to stay present with that which is in the undercurrent. And I guess that's what I'm really feeling right now. I could have woven a story for you about my teenager and the last 24 hours that I've experienced with him and um, and how difficult and overwhelmed I feel and how exhausted and and um, lost, quite frankly. I feel like I'm in that in-between stage of my world. Have you ever been in that moment of, or those moments or those days or those weeks of you just don't know where you're headed? It doesn't feel right where you are. You can't really see the end of the tunnel, but you feel all of the upheaval and uncertainty that comes with change and transition. So you're joining Mandy here with the Soulfully Sustainable Radio Show and as always, just following my impulse to share with you all. And um, and here we are. So I don't know where the rest of this is taking me, but I do have a, a deep gratitude for giving myself this space this morning to engage with you all. And so this is a new format for me, this podcast idea. This is a new way of doing business, if you will. So rather than solely being on the radio station or Facebook Live, I've made the decision to release these um, these shows, these clips, these experiences, these snapshots into my life of sustainability um, in a uh, more fuller fashion. So you'll, you can find it on my website at soulfullysoil.ca. You'll be able to find it 
or links to this information in these podcasts via my Facebook page at Soulfully Soil and um, probably my personal page as well. So I appreciate that you're joining me here today. And have you ever in your world, um, do you do you hold space for those things that are brewing inside of you? I know that my habitual way of, of dealing with that has been and has meant allowing things to boil and roll inside of me to the point of explosion. So either I implode and I cry into a puddle of tears on the floor for, you know, hours or days, or I explode on those around me. And that intensity that's forming, I've come to have a different relationship with it now. Um, but, but you know, what is your habit? What is your pattern? What is your strategy to deal with the intensity as it builds? One of my strategies has been to blame other people. So I weave great stories about how this person isn't doing that and if they only did this or that, then my life would be better and they're they're creating this inside of me and if if somebody only helped me with the dishes more, if somebody only took responsibility to make a few meals for me or if I had more money or if I just lived in a different city or if I didn't have a blended family, like the list goes on and on. The excuses go on and on. My storylines... There's so many of them, it's hard to even keep track of them. But I seem to recycle uh, each storyline inside of me in, in a habitual fashion. And so one of my strategies is blaming other people and creating storylines around it. Another one of my strategies to cope with that intensity and that um, rage, quite frankly, that shows up sometimes is... Um, is to explode. So some people are turn inward sort of people and they de- they call themselves names and they put themselves down and they, they get into a depressed state where they don't feel good and they hate their lives and they're sad and they're grievous and all of those things. You know, I've experienced that in my life, but it's not my go-to. My go-to is allow allowing that intensity and that, that rage and that unclaimed um, fire energy to just go until I explode. So what I'll do is I'll create in my life a situation where my children are really intense and they're not owning it and they're yelling and blaming other people or they're grouchy and you can feel the energy in the room or they're blamey or they're all those things but what they are are mirrors or reflections of where my internal state lies. So in creating another person to be ragey and angry and slammy and pissy I get to now unleash on them and tell them what shitty people they are and how bad they're being and how they should do it a certain way that, you know, that isn't the way they're doing it right now. And and so one of my strategies is really unleashing on other people. So I continue to create scenarios where I get to do that because at the end of me raging on somebody else, I get that relief. I get that release. I get that, that softening that happens after a, a fiery interaction. And um, rather than owning my own fire energy or intensity, um, I, I, and coveting it and holding it for myself and knowing that it's about creation and it's about the next layer of my own transformation, spewing it at somebody else takes that away from me. So I become decompressed in the moment. I feel better for the moment. You know, I've yelled at somebody loud enough or about the right things that, that, that makes the inside of me not so intense and fiery. That's really great but only to come back again and again. One of the things I really appreciate um, about my own journey for resiliency and sustainability is my recognition that my menstrual cycle gives me an opportunity every 28 days to revisit my own intensity. I've come to a relationship with my own cycles and patterns and rhythms where I understand that these things come back on themselves. So look at your life. I invite you to look at your life and look at the moments. Maybe even track it in your journal or write a note down on the calendar that says, you know, really intense today, uh, really martyry, really sad for myself, really overwhelmed. And then watch as the months go by. What is the date of that? How does it relate to your moon time? How does it relate to your cycle? And you might just find a pattern of behavior. So we all know that there's, you know, quote unquote, old wives tales in relation to the moon. As we have a full moon, um, people become more crazy and they make crazier decisions and there's lots more fighting and lots more intensity and any police officer or emergency room room nurse or doctor will tell you that the full moon in those places and spaces is crazy and the most 
Um, the things that are the most insane that you can't predict happen around those times. People behave irrationally, if you will. And I am air quoting irrationally. Because I don't think that it, I don't think that it means that there's a bunch of crazy people, quote unquote, there's a bunch of mentally ill people, quote unquote, or any of those sorts of things. I think that with the, the cycles and the rhythms of the moon, we become fuller. We're closer and further away and the water on the planet changes and shifts according to the moon and the moon energy. And so in relation to my moon time or my menstrual cycle, all of that comes to a head. And it offers me this beautiful, fertile space of intensity, of fieriness, of tears, right on the other end of that fieriness, of the need to slow down. And so I, I see that that's a cyclical pattern in my life. And part of my sustainability or my resiliency in that is recognizing, oh, I'm feeling extra intense today. And, you know, it always the question comes up for me, well, what time of the month is it? And I have a look. And inevitably... I would argue always it's the few days before my cycles to arrive. And so I can I can be gentle with myself in that. I can soften into that. I can know that it isn't as extreme as it feels. And in doing that, giving myself permission to soften and allow what's on the other end of that intensity, which is always softness and nourishment and um, the willingness to hear and see the signs of where my next choices and impulses are going to come from. And when I'm in that space, that feels like flow. It doesn't feel so um, difficult and, you know, like I'm butting my head against my reality. And that feels sustainable. That feels regenerative inside of me. Fighting that intensity and fighting what lies in the undercurrent causes friction and causes anxiety, causes like, I don't like the word anxiety, but causes disruption inside of me and then inside of my life and, and those that I create with. So I invite you to have a look at your own internal state. I invite you to really notice and observe when you're more intense and when you're not, when your life is calling to you to be more intense and whether or not you invite that, whether or not you soften into that, whether or not you make space for it. And sometimes that's just make space for excusing yourself from being around people for a few minutes and just taking some long, slow inhale and exhale breaths and allowing your body and your device to soften and allowing that to come to pass to be what it needs to be, whether that's tears, whether that's a knowing, an aha moment, knowledge and insight that you didn't know before. Um, but part of how I live in a soulful fashion for myself is allowing my soul to speak to me, is to hear when it is speaking to me. And one of the ways I do that is start to observe my patterns of behavior, start to recognize when I'm intense, when that happens certain times. And the beauty is I can't get it wrong. So each month as I have unresolved issues and unresolved ideas and thoughts and old ways of being, I get to relive that inside of my t intensity. I get to live that, that martyry victim -y, oh my gosh, my life sucks, nobody knows how to help me, you know, giving up my power in that way. I get to do that every month if I, if I haven't lived in a fully authentic way. I get to visit that again. And that is my soulfully sustainable conversation for today. Thank you again for listening, and I look forward to our next gathering. I have a couple of speakers coming up on the Soulfully Sustainable radio show, uh, one being for um, this morning, October 15th. I have Chris Robinson of the Purple Carrot joining me, and we have no idea where we're taking ourselves, as usual, and intend to really roll around in an intuitive from an intuitive perspective about healing our bodies and how to feed our bodies. And then on October 22nd, I have Kim Overs of Naturistas joining me as well. And we get to chat with Kim. And this will be the first time that Kim's come into the studio to chat on the Soulfully Sustainable radio show or podcast, I suppose we're calling it these days. Um, and Kim has an amazing background um, in natural health and really has a unique business perspective um, that I feel is a really sustainable way to engage community around business. So I'm looking forward to meeting with her, and we'll have a few more folks coming up in October and then again in November, and hopefully some music. I've invited a really great singer-songwriter friend to come join as well. So thanks for joining me today on the Soulfully Sustainable Radio Show, and I look forward to hearing about 
your experience of intensity and starting to see where that plays out in your world. So as always, reach out. You can reach me at soulfullysoil at gmail.com. You can find me at soulfullysoil.ca or on Facebook for Soulfully Soil. So I wish you a most sustainable and regenerative and self-sourcing insightful day. Thanks for joining.